Let's start with the u.school. What are our options for connecting u.elementary to the internet? Of course, one option is to build an infrastructure of optical fiber throughout the islands, including to the school, but that could easily cost at least millions or tens of millions of dollars. So that doesn't really satisfy the affordability requirement of our design challenge. Another option might be to give them access to the internet via satellite, but that is quite expensive with relatively high monthly fees and there's a rather large lag or high latency for satellite internet. Instead, let's consider the fact that the country of FSM already has access to the internet through the submarine optical fibers. Since building a physical infrastructure and a physical link from the UDOT school to an access point to the optical fiber is too expensive for now, let's see if we can build a wireless link from the UDOT school to a location in FSM where there is already access to the internet. Wayno Island, right here, which is the Chuk state of FSM, is one of the two islands in FSM connected to a submarine fiber optic cable. UDOT Island and UDOT Elementary School is about 15 kilometers away from Wayno Island. Here's a picture of the UDOT School on UDOT. This location on Wayno Island has access to the internet right here. And here is where the UDOT school is on UDOT. As a result, we want to wirelessly transmit data along this red line. In order to do this, we need an antenna at both ends to both transmit and receive data. So let's look at our antenna options. There are omnidirectional antennas, where the power goes in a lot of different directions simultaneously. So these have wide beam widths. We already looked at the radiation patterns for a dipole, for example. And as we saw earlier, we can add design elements like a reflector to make an omnidirectional antenna more directional. On the other hand, for this design challenge, we have more flexibility in choosing an antenna shape and design than we did for the tumor ablation in the human body. So we could consider using directional antennas. So question, for this application, do we want to use a directional antenna at either end of our wireless link, or do we want omnidirectional antennas? You can pause the video if you like. At UDOT school, it makes sense to have a directional antenna. We know exactly where the closest internet access point is, right here, and we want to communicate only in that direction. But on Wayno Island, the choice of antenna depends on whether we want to connect other locations to the internet as well. If there are going to be other users in different locations, like maybe on these islands, or on other houses or buildings on UDOT Island, we might want an omnidirectional antenna. As long as we could get an omnidirectional antenna that could radiate enough power so that once the power spreads out over in all these different directions, it would still be strong enough to be received at these various locations. In our case, for now, for this design challenge, let's just focus on getting this one wireless link working reliably. Typically, it's often good to start simple and then improve or expand over time once we have a good demonstration. So let's use directional antennas at both UDOT and Wayno Island. Take out your in-class project notebooks and make a note about how we will focus initially on setting up a single wireless link between two fixed positions, Wayno and UDOT. So we will use directional antennas rather than omnidirectional antennas.